Just days before the McKay meet and greet, we aired Ezra's shocking report regarding his interrogation by those ex-cop bureaucrats who now do the bidding for the Commissioner of Canada elections. Ezra's crime? Well, he wrote a book about Trudeau. A uh, correction. He wrote a critical book about Trudeau. You see, <clears throat> puff pieces about Trudeau. Oh, those are allowed. In fact, they're even encouraged. But a critical book about Prime Minister Blackface? Well, <laughs> that is apparently an illegal campaign activity. Check out this snippet of the interrogation Ezra endured at the hands of ex-Mountie Dudley Do-Right, or I mean Tim McCann. You did a, a blurb online that I watched, and you speak about, of course, that it was released in time for the election. Which, if, if that's your position today, that wouldn't allow you to have the exemption for, for advertising for a book. Um, I think I need to check my GPS. Was that office located in Ottawa or Pyongyang? Anyway, this was surely the story of the week. And I'm not just saying that out of bravado. After all, after that video aired, Ezra's book, The Lebranos, soared to number one on Amazon.ca. This story has even received international media attention. So I wanted to see how much of a free speech champion Peter McKay is by simply asking him his opinion regarding the electoral interrogation of our beloved commander. To use a baseball analogy, my question was akin to a softball floating across home plate just begging to be hit out of the ballpark. But when I finally got past McKay's handlers to ask my query, <laughs> here's how things went down. So David, there's no questions? I, I just gotta see no. if I can ask him. No, there's no, no questions. Yeah, yeah. You guys are preventing me from interviewing. I, I just want to ask one question, not even an interview. There, there's no media. It's a, it's a well, question on freedom of speech. You're welcome to get a photo. There's no, there's no question. So, I, under, under, so under Peter McKay, it'll be the same as Andrew Shear that the rebel is not allowed to be here? We're here, aren't you? Uh, well, excuse me. I'm here, but, but I, I'm going to ask a question. Yes. Hi, Mr. McKay. How you doing? Just want to ask you, sir, what 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 do you feel about uh, Ezra Levent being interrogated by uh, the elections commissioner? This like being interrogated, including right now. So, but, <laughs> but, but, but this is a, this is a very important freedom of speech issue, Mr. McKay. I don't even know why it hasn't been raised in the House by your conservative colleagues. Do you have a comment on that? Well, they, you should talk to those conservative colleagues. I'm, I'm not in the House of Commons, uh, so I don't have an opportunity to raise it. What is your opinion of the Elections Commissioner going after Ezra Levent simply for writing a book during an election campaign about a Prime Minister? Well, I don't have any of the evidence. I don't have any of the information other than what I've read, so we'll, we'll see. You haven't heard about this? I have heard about it, just briefly, but I don't have any of the facts. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you, okay, I mean, shocked. <laughs> really, Mr. McKay, you were unaware of this story? Really, Peter, you felt like you were being interrogated by me simply for posing a question? Come on, man, give your head a shake. But let's give Mr. McKay the benefit of the doubt, folks. Let's pretend he never had heard about this story. So here's how I would have answered that question if I were in his shoes. I would have prefaced the response with, if what you're saying is truthful and accurate, and then I would have added, then this was an outrageous attack by bureaucrats in a grotesque attempt to shut down freedom of speech and freedom of the press. And furthermore, should I become prime minister, this business of using Elections Canada bureaucrats as attack dogs to go after authors critical of a government will no longer be tolerated. Bingo! That is the right response. That is a response that would resonate with the party faithful. Instead, we got the Sergeant Schultz shtick. I see nothing. I know nothing. And since that night, things have gone from bad to worse. Indeed, a couple of days later, Peter McKay consented to an interview with CTV, and this happened. After the 45-minute tour, McKay agreed to discuss his return to politics. I'm at a point now with some further private sector experience and some reflection that I would like to do politics a little differently. And, and everybody says that, but having been in and, and left and coming back to it, I, I think I, I bring... Um, a new level of compassion, a new level of, of understanding of perhaps how things could work a little better at a practical level. And I'd also like, and everybody says this, but I would like to see some civility. 
You say civility. I, I noticed you, there was a video put on Twitter um, talking about Justin Trudeau's yoga expenses. And is that civil, though? I mean, highlighting 800 and some odd dollars in, in, in no, yoga expenses? No, it isn't. And, and uh, that was something that happened that I, I, I'm not proud of. I, I, don't, uh, I don't have the opportunity always to vet every single thing that goes on that social media account. So we're going to do better. And in that, okay. I, I okay, think so we're done. you just went um, way over. I'm sorry. At that moment, his team abruptly I, I, ended the okay. interview. I, that's that's I, quite. He said civility. I, I mean, we, she's just doing her job. She's a journalist. I'm doing my job, guys. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're just the tweet has been viewed more than 700,000 times, <laughs> with many reminding McKay about his own expense controversy when, as Minister of Defense, he used a search and rescue helicopter to pick him up from a fishing lodge. The price tag. An estimated sixteen thousand dollars. We've made okay. a decision that we'd like to um, stop the interview. Okay. Ooh, that's awkward. And did you catch the line about McKay not vetting all the tweets that go out in his name? So A, he's not writing his own tweets, and B, he threw a member of his team under the bus for the yoga tweet. And finally, C, sorry, Peter, you hired and approved members of your team, so yeah. The buck does stop with you. And so it is that the front runner for the role of the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada has quickly devolved from stud to dud. He's coming across as less Stephen Harper and inexplicably more like Andrew Scheer. That's an excerpt from The Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.